Greetings and salutations, everyone. I'm super pumped because we're talking about Fidelity's zero expense index funds, specifically F0X. I'm going to speak a bit about the fund, and then I'll show you my real numbers after 18 months of investing using the dollar cost averaging method. If you stick around until the end, you'll learn the critical mistake I made when investing in FCROX and how you can avoid this for yourself, regardless of whether your index funds are from Fidelity, Vanguard, Schwab, or some other company. If you watch the news in the United States, you've likely heard the names of major American financial indexes like the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, and Russell 2000. We also have the Standard & Poor's 500, often called the S&P 500 for short, which is probably the most popular market index. It is comprised of the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the U.S. by market value. More broadly, an index is a method to track the performance of a group of assets in a standardized way. Measuring the stock market, or a subset of one, helps investors to compare current price levels with past prices in order to calculate the market performance. Thus, an index fund is a portfolio of stocks or bonds that is designed to match the composition and performance of a financial market index. Index funds make it easy to have a diversified investment portfolio by allowing you to invest in a basket of different companies all at once. Since they follow a passive investment strategy, index funds can have lower management fees than actively managed mutual funds. Fidelity has been aggressively trying to compete with Vanguard for market share, particularly when it comes to new investors. Around 2018, they started offering index funds with lower expense ratios than the popular Vanguard funds. They also created four of these funds to have a 0% expense ratio. Now, they're obviously losing money on these zero funds, but they're eating the costs with the hope that these funds can entice people to become Fidelity customers and eventually bring in more profits once they start using their other products. Of the zero funds, the fund that I've been invested with the longest is FZROX, which is the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund. If you already invest in VTSAX, VTI, or FSKAX, FZROX is similar to them. In the past 12 months, the fund is up 35.16%, and in 2021 specifically, it has seen 4.6% growth. It's considered a large blend fund, meaning that it has a mix of growth stocks and value stocks, most of which are large cap companies, though a fair percentage are small and mid cap companies. This fund has 2,442 holdings, and its objective is to return investment results that correspond with the total return of a broad range of US stocks. As you can see, the companies in this fund represent a variety of the major market sectors, which aligns with what you see in the actual stock market. I used dollar cost averaging to invest in FCROX. Dollar cost averaging, or DCA, is a strategy to reduce the impact of volatility by spreading out your stock or fund purchases over time so you're not buying shares at a high point for prices. This article suggests that DCA is when you invest at regular intervals and in roughly equal amounts. Though I invested in FCROX over several months, it wasn't necessarily a predefined interval or amount of money. I still feel like it qualifies as DCA, but I'll let you be the judge. After you see my real numbers, let me know in the comments. Is this DCA or is it not? Let me show y'all where the money resides. FZROX came up on my radar sometime in summer 2019. I decided to open a brokerage account with Fidelity and I transferred $5,000 from my high yield savings account and invested it into FZROX. Now on those particular shares, I'm up over 38 percent let's see we can actually format this as a percentage for 
easier reading. After that, as you can see, I didn't touch that fund for a few months. Dividends and short-term capital gains were the next investment there. So that was $82. A couple days after dividends were paid, I decided to set up a recurring investment into FZROX each month that was $250. When the market started tanking in March 2020, due to the pandemic, I can't lie, I got freaked out and I canceled the recurring transfer. So you can see I don't have any activity from February until May. Um, at the same time, I also lowered my 401k contributions. In retrospect, I probably should have stayed the course. However, I never sold anything. Once May 2020 came around, I resumed investing. And then in December 2020, and again in January 2021, I made some larger investments into FCROX after rolling over my 401k into my IRA, and then um, subsequently rebalancing my portfolio. All of these values are just copied and pasted from my Fidelity account, um, and I just rearranged the columns so they make a little bit more sense as I walk through this. But let's see how much I have invested to date. So we'll just take the sum of the C column. So to date, I have invested over $36,000. Um, and let's see how much I've made. So again, we'll take the sum of D2 to D19. And it's saying zero. Why ever could that be? I'm guessing that Google Sheets is not interpreting the values in the D column as currency, so I will just format it that way. And now it understands it. It has this as $4,164, so that's my total gain across all the shares. Now for the current value, we're just going to add everything up. Essentially, the sum of the E column should equal these two together but we'll just do it as the sum of E for simplicity's sake. And for some reason, this is coming in really oddly. So we just want to go ahead and format this as currency as well. Okay, awesome. Now we see my current value of all of my FCROX shares is $40,628.52. Now let's try to understand my percent gain. So we'll take D20, which is our total gain over C20, which is our cost basis. And we see that I have an 11.42% total increase, which is very exciting. I also want to call your attention to column H. So this is the cost basis per share. Notice how the price fluctuates over time. The first time I invested in it, it was 1035. But with the market drop, I got in at a $9.84 cost per share. It certainly went lower between February and May. I just wanted to call your attention to this so you can see how the market can rise and fall. Now the moment everyone has been waiting for. What do I regret about investing in FCROX? I've already mentioned that I wish I hadn't canceled my automated monthly investments. The other regret I have is investing in FCROX altogether. Even though it's a great fund, using an ETF in a brokerage account rather than an index fund helps you save money on taxes because they are more likely to only generate distributions with preferred tax treatment. For now, I'm keeping my holdings in FCROX. Go. It was cool for me to be able to reflect on my investment journey with my largest holding. If you're wondering how to research an index fund, Check out the video I made. I share how to understand a fund's composition and walk through metrics like risk and volatility. If you already have an ETF or index fund that you love, let us know in the comments what it is and why you like it.